Uh, good morning and uh, happy Sabbath everyone. We want to welcome you to our worship and uh, our adult uh, lesson discussion uh, this Sabbath morning. We reckon that uh, there are, you know, worshippers and uh, viewers uh, from various parts of the world. We welcome you to uh, this morning uh, discussion. Uh, this is New Life Church, uh, 5th Ngong Avenue, and we reckon that in our auditorium there are various classes, and we want to welcome those that are physically present in church to join the various classes uh, that are in church, and we will, of course, also be dialoguing with our audience, with our listeners from various parts of the world, whether you are on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, Radio Naema, or whatever uh, link that you're using, we welcome you to our worship uh, today. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we want to start our class uh, by prayer, so I will pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promise of rest uh, that was made available to our forefathers in the Garden of Eden. We want to thank you for the promise of rest that was made to Abraham want to promise, uh, thank you for the promise of rest that was made to the Israelites. We want to thank you for the Davinic rest, a promise that was made to David uh, for, uh, for, for seeing uh, the uh, presence and the availability uh, and, and, and the ministry of Jesus Christ uh, for our sins. We want to thank you, Lord, for the rest that is being uh, made available to us by the ministry of Christ in heaven. And we want to thank you for the opportunity to just learn about these things and, and to prepare ourselves for this, even as we talk about and discuss the rest that you have promised to us today. We pray that your Holy Spirit will come down and talk to each and every one of us that we may be prepared for this rest. This be our prayer, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you very much uh, once more. We uh, have seen in our study of, uh, we've seen in our study of the book of Hebrews as we, as we, uh, as we uh, went through chapter 1 and chapter 2 that we were talking of Christ as the ruler and the liberator of God's people. And today we want to talk about uh, the uh, promise of rest, Christ uh, uh, availing to us a rest, and also uh, the promise of rest that is that is made available to us. And, and we see this uh, when God promised a rest for Adam and Eve, when God promised a rest for Abraham, when God promised a rest for the Israelites, when God promised a rest for uh, David, uh, which was, was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So today I have uh, a panel here of young people, and I want to thank God for each and every one of them, and to ask them to kindly uh, introduce themselves, starting from my right, please. Thank you very much, Doreen. Uh, on, on my left. And my name is Melanie, and recently Matengo. Melanie and recently Matengo. How recent is Matengo? About three months. Three months into Matengo. Thank you and we thank God for that. Yes, uh, Denning? Good morning. My name is Denning. Um, I'm happy to be here with you this morning. Be blessed. Uh, <clears throat> let's, let's start with you, uh, uh, Malene. Uh, Melanie. Uh, sorry, sometimes I pronounce it as Malene and, 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 and perhaps that talks about my orientation. But there remains a rest. There, therefore, remains a rest for the people of God. Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse 9, which is our memory text this morning. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. What is your understanding of this text uh, that, that really is our key, is our focus for the lesson today? 
Sure. Um, from the key text, the Bible says that there remains a rest. That means uh, there had been or there was a rest before, but the, the promise of this rest has not been fulfilled. And in our present day, the Bible is clear that there remains. So what was this rest that was al is alluded to in this text? We find that... Um, this is the rest that was promised in the Garden of Eden after God cre at God's creation. The Sabbath rest came, came into place. That was the first time that we find rest in the Bible. Then later on, um, down, down in the history, after Adam and he, we find Abraham who was promised rest, a land of rest. And that seems to not have been accomplished. And we will find out why as we go throughout the lesson. Then we go down the history. We find David also was promised rest. David the king was promised rest uh, when uh, he was resting from his enemies. Okay. Now we find that still was not fulfilled. Down to the time of Paul, we find that the Bible says that re there remains a rest. So we will, um, today, the, our burden for this lesson is to find out what is this rest and how can we accomplish or fulfill it so that we are at rest eternally at last? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Melanie. So there's something that remains, which means there's something that was attempted but not quite accomplished. So something has been left that is, is, is we should look uh, forward to. And, and as you say, it's something that we hope to unpack uh, during, during our discussion today. So, so Melanie, back to, back, back to you again. Uh, you've talked briefly about the Sabbath as a rest. What, what is the institution of the Sabbath as a rest? And, and, uh, and, and when you talk of, of, of remaining, does the Sabbath itself remain? How, how, how does the Sabbath rest fulfill, you know, uh, or, or talked about Christ as the giver of rest? Thank you so much, Elder. Um, now, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11, we find uh, the Sabbath commandment. And we will focus just on verse 11. That is Exodus 20, verse 11. Um, and gi this gives the essence of the Sabbath because it starts with the word for. For in other version is because. So why do we have the Sabbath? Right from the word of God it says, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the first purpose of the Sabbath is a remembrance God's creation. Sabbath brings to mind who is worthy of what, who is the creator. And the second aspect that we find in Sabbath is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5. This is a reiteration of the commandments of God by Moses now. De Deuteronomy 5, and we will focus on verse 15. Um, Deuteronomy 5, 15. The Bible says, and remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, there we find, therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. So here we find again that the reason why God will have us keep Sabbath, which is a form or is a... a, 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 a a shadow of the, the ultimate rest is because he, in our spiritual sense, has relieved us or has saved us from the bondage of sin. Yes. So, sorry, Melanie, and, and I've got to, to ha come back to you again. You know, there's, there's, there's this talk that uh, Sabbath is, is uh, Sabbath remembrance or Sabbath observance is, is a Jewish tradition. We see, we see God resting on the Sabbath and asking Adam and Eve to take a rest on the Sabbath. Were Adam and Eve Jews? No. So, so Sabbath remembrance preceded... Preceded Judaism. Jews, yes, it did, okay. yes. Thank you very much. I think that's important because oftentimes you hear quite a lot saying, you know, uh, Sabbath was a Jewish tradition its remembrance, its observance, it's uh, for people to rest. We, have, we would basically be following what the Jews were doing and which has been abolished, you know, abolished uh, by the coming of Christ, which is not true because Adam and Eve were not Jews. Denning. Yes, Elder. 
Uh, there's, there's been quite a talk, uh, yeah. quite a bit about the Sabbath. Just take us through uh, the condition of the Israelites, or ra rather, the promise that was made to Abraham about the rest, how it was to be fulfilled, and the condition that the Israelites had in Egypt, and how they got out of that to get their rest. Thank you, Elder. Now, uh, the premise of which uh, Abraham we see being called in Genesis, uh, Abraham is drawn from a land where people uh, were basi basically heathenistic people, people who were moon worshippers. So God had to draw him. Denning, out. Denning, speak up a bit. Sorry. So God had to draw him out of that context to bring him somewhere where he could uh, have a, div a divine connection with him, mm -hmm. where he could have true rest with him. Mm -hmm. So, in like manner, we see in Genesis chapter 12, verse 8. Uh, Abraham being called to change his location from where he was to go from the Ur of the Chaldeans to go to a land where he could uh, engage in an intimate connection with mm -hmm, God. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, in like manner, you can also see God had to change the premise of the Israelites from where they were bound in bondage uh, by Pharaoh in, 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 uh, in, the land of, in the land of Egypt to mm -hmm. take them to Cana, mm -hmm. where he can have that intimate uh, relation with him. Because mm -hmm. you know, uh, external influences of uh, surrounding communities uh, bore down on the people, and their, their influences, uh, their uh, idolatrous uh, yeah. practices, uh, got down to, to influencing and watering down their connection with God. So if you may allow me to read, uh, that will be also in Deuteronomy, where it sheds light on both the physical and the spiritual aspect. So there has to be both aspects for us to have a connection with God. So God, in drawing out his people, first from the covenant that he had with, uh, with Abraham, you can see that time when Abraham was asleep, God passed in the midst of his sacrifice uh, to, to just, just as, a reminder of, uh, as a reminder of the covenant that he, uh, that he had with him, that he wanted to sustain that mutual connection. And that's why you see a change in location, your location to a place where he could have an intimate connection with him. So if you'll allow me to read uh, just Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 1 through 14, but uh, because of the length of the verse, we'll just read uh, chapter, chapter, chapter 12 and verse 1 through 5. So Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 1, and it said, uh, these are the statutes and judgments uh, you shall be careful to observe in the land which the Lord your fathers is giving you to possess all the days that you live on the earth. You shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations shall dispossess uh, their, served, uh, served their gods on the high mountains, on the hills, and under every green tree. And you shall also destroy the altars and break the sacred pillars their wood, uh, and burn their wooden images of, with fire. You shall cut down the carved images of their gods and destroy the names from that place. You shall not worship the Lord your God with such things. So we have to uh, uh, put away all the things that hinder us in order to have a, an intimate connection with God. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Denning. Uh, you have talked of, you know, the requirement to destroy the altars of Baal that they were to find in the land of Canaan the requirement that they needed to consecrate themselves to the service of God. Uh, I'll come back to you on that point, but I just want Doreen to help me out here. So, so what in your view were, were, why in your view would the Israelites then be unable to get a complete rest? it says that our sufficiency is of God. Um, this says or this enables us to see that by our own power we are not able to um, keep God's commands but it's by God's grace and realizing that we are weak and he is strong and depending on him to enable us to keep his law as he would like us to. Thank you very much Doreen. 
I, I think you've brought an important point, which is that uh, in our Christian journey will we'll still have challenges. Just like there were challenges when the Israelites were moving from uh, Egypt to, to Canaan, and then because of the challenges they experienced, they still remember the meat they used to eat in Egypt. They still remember the waters of the Nile as opposed to the thirst in the desert, the challenges that they encountered in the desert. So, so, so the Christian journey to our final rest still has its challenges. But those challenges should not make us think that the world, what the world offers, that what Egypt offers would be better. Because then, Denning, uh, I'd like to invite you then to tell us how, how uh, Doreen has just told us that they were unable to get the rest, both the physical rest and the spiritual rest because they still had vestiges of, of Egypt with them. So, so, so in what way can we help ourselves? Uh, because some, 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 some young people are sent to go and spy the land and bring back a word. In what way can we help each other? Because then some people will doubt, others will be strong in this journey. In what way can we help each other in this journey to the final rest? So that the doubtful ones then get to know that yes, there may be giants in Canaan, but we are able to conquer them with God's uh, help. Yes, thank you, Elder. So the thing that uh, the theme that that will be underlined there is our, our faith. Faith. So we need to we need to have staunch faith in order to be able to accomplish the works that uh, the works that are ahead of us. The path that we the, the path that we follow is likely to be de 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 bedeviled with all sorts of challenges. So, in like manner, you saw that the way the two spies, the only two, the two Joseph uh, and, and Caleb, who brought up, Joshua and Caleb, rather, who brought back a positive report. And you see, it was because of faith. Yes, they agreed that we had a, there, was a, there was a monumental task ahead of, uh, ahead of them. But because of their faith in God, they knew that they could surmount that challenge. So, in like manner, if we exercise faith and, and hold dear that faith that, that, that is within us, we'll be able to surmount all the challenges beset before us. You see, the reason why the Israelites also were smitten by the calamities that they had was because they were faithless. God had showed the, 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 the wilderness generation, the desert generation, numerous miracles without number. There was a miracle of manna. God smote the entire Egyptian army at the, by the Red Sea. Provision of water from the rock. I mean, what, what more was needed for, for, for these people to be convinced for their faith to increase? They had all clear indications uh, glaring before them, but they didn't take up their faith. And such, you see God revisited them with, uh, revisited their iniquity by, 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 allowing, uh, by allowing foreign territories to come, and, uh, to, fa to come and occupy their land. They were brought under foreign occupation just because the faith is where they erred from. And with, uh, once you lose the faith, you lose that intimate connection with God then you won't have rest. You'll be perpetually uh, at, 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 at a state of uh, turmoil. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Denning. Now, Doreen, uh, oftentimes we delay decision-making. And you see it in the, in the attitude of the Israelites. They delay decision-making because of, of a number of things. Uh, you know, the good meat in Egypt, the challenges they are exp experiencing. What does it take to take a decision today? And why is it that it is important to take a decision today? Um, I believe that what it takes for us to make our decision to follow Christ today is just realizing that we depend on him and just letting go of the trusting him to cleanse us from the sins that easily beset us. This means... Um, um, having unwavering faith, having, there's, there's a quote in um, Heavenly Places, one of Ellen White's devotionals, it says that we should educate ourselves to have unlimited confidence in God. So that means we should trust God despite everything. We should not have one foot in the world and another foot in church because we'll keep on oscillating between both places and we'll never have a firm um, standing with God. So for us to have... Um, 
to, to listen to God's word today and to hear what he says, we should have that firm faith in God. And if we do not have that firm faith in God, we'll end up hardening our hearts and will not listen to what God, says, what God wants for us. Um, just allow me to read from a devotional. Um, it's called From the Heart. And it relates to what we're talking about of making a choice to follow God today. It says, do not entertain uh, the thought that because you have made mistakes, because your life has been darkened by errors, your heavenly father does not love you and will not hear you when you pray. His love is touched by our sorrows and even by the utterance of them. Nothing that in any way concerns our peace is too small for him to notice. So it also goes to say that none have fallen so low, none are so vile that they cannot find deliverance in Christ. So we should just um, recognize that God does not see us how man sees us. God's ways are higher than our ways. So we should always be willing um, to listen to him today when he calls us. Uh, but Doreen, uh, Doreen uh, back to you again. What, or, or, or Melanie can help, what, what leads to procrastination? What leads to indecisiveness in our Christian, in our Christian journey, in your view? In my view, I'm glad you asked it my view. Uh, I'm just going to give an example. For the last two or three weeks, uh, we have been meaning to make a call to a friend of us that we met and um, just find out how he's doing. And the, the thought was to have a Bible study with him. Now, these are very spiritual decisions. I know there's some decisions that you just make just like that. I'm hungry. I want food. That doesn't take long. Do I eat or do I eat not? Uh, but when it comes to spiritual decisions, we find that there's a tug of war. And uh, this is where the effort comes in. Because we are called to strive to enter into this rest. How we strive is by overcoming this back and forth. And we have to lean, like Doreen said, lean on Jesus uh, completely. So procrastination in the spiritual sense comes with uh, we not totally surrendering to God. For he says that without him we can do nothing. Making a decision for God is a divine, a divine thing. We can say that we do it, but spiritually and um, to have a, a final step and a firm decision, we need the hand of God. So what to answer that, procrastination just is a, a window into seeing that there is still a gap in our surrender to God. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll come back to you on it uh, at some point. Uh, because... Uh, oftentimes we also think that uh, we, can, we, can, we can achieve it, we can do it by ourselves and, and that is fraught with challenges because uh, you see yourself as opposed to seeing Christ. And so, so Doreen, how can we, how can we truly, truly be enjoined uh, to God's rest? And, and, and uh, I'd, I'd like you to talk of the Sabbath rest. I'd like you to talk of the Davinic rest. That is the rest that was promised to David and fulfilled in Christ. And, and then at some point, we'll come back to the, the delayed. The delayed. Rest. So how can, we, how can we be enjoined as Christians to, 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 the, to the rest, to the rest with God, uh, both uh, uh, Abrahamic rest, we have seen from Denning that the Israelites were unable to get it on account of uh, losing faith. But how can we uh, as Christians get to enjoy, if I would say, the Sabbath rest and the rest that was promised to David and fulfilled in, in the coming of Christ? Um, I believe that we are able to get that rest by realizing that the Sabbath is a double blessing for us. The Sabbath is a time for us to recognize and appreciate God's works of creation. It's a time for us to appreciate that God has done so many things and he's very faithful to us. It's also a time for us to recognize um, God's redemptive power for us through his son Jesus Christ. And this is um, through studying God's word, through communing with the saints, and even visiting the sick in hospitals, yes. visiting those in prisons, yes. visiting those in children's homes. Mm -hmm. Through that, we're able to realize how much God has done for us and how much he wants us to do to others through um, his grace. Amen. 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 Denning, uh, you know, uh, Melanie had just a little earlier on 
uh, touched briefly on the fact that we need to exercise, exercise our faith, mm -hmm. be diligent in our faith, mm -hmm. in order to to get to get the rest. Uh, are we to labor? And and if we are not to labor, what do we? What sort of labor is it? And and can that labor get us the rest? Thank you, Elder. Uh, so, uh, in that kind of, in that sense, we are not talking about uh, labor in the strictest sense per se. So, what that means is we should exercise faith in us, and uh, by exercising faith in us through the grace of Christ, we'll be able to manifest works outside. So, that's what it means. We need to have. Uh, first of all, we need to have faith, and through faith, we'll be able to be diligently determined. Uh, to carry out those works and after being diligently determined we'll have deliberate effort and we'll be intentional about our works which will be made manifest and in that manner we are able to manifest all the spirit all the all the fruits and gifts that the devil uh, that, that the that that god has uh, has has lined before us so in that manner the, the theme that will be underlined is faith and us having the de de deliberate determination for us to ma make manifest the fruits and the gifts of the holy spirit through christ our savior yes uh, Melanie, uh, yes. you are you are you um, add on? Yes. Um you know in Matthew eleven twenty eight Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. There's an element that we we have to exercise the, the faith. God gave us the power of the will. Now willpower is um um that which only human beings have in this sense, like animals and all those sort of things. You can't tell them to make a decision for Christ. But willpower is where the contention is at. So the labor that we have to do is to, uh, we're told to flee, resist the devil. Resisting needs some effort. I mean, being saved is not easy. Let's just put it like that. For the devil will always be at your door trying to pull you away. But the element of calm, making that decision, not procrastinating, now come today, for we don't know what tomorrow will bring. So coming is an effort. And striving to enter into that rest is allowing the power of surrender. Surrender also takes effort. Surrendering to God is a verb. To surrender is to do, is to, is to let go. Now, it's ironic that letting go is hard, but it is. So what we need to do in to enter into that rest, surrender and to come. And then he will give that rest. So, so, so Doreen, uh, isn't salvation not by faith alone? Um, there's a quote, I believe, by Martin Luther that says, our faith or our salvation is by faith but that faith is not alone that means that um, <laughs> it can't just be by faith alone your works must correspond to your faith and um, I think even the lesson writer says that this rest is a rest of grace mm. but we must exercise faith in him mm. how do you exercise faith your works must correspond to the faith that you have Right. Uh, thank you very much. I think that that settles the point that uh, you know uh, salvation is by is by faith, but surrendering is a verb that requires action. Uh, we have been given the will, and it requires that we exercise our will to take positive steps to go. You know, come unto me. So we have to go to Christ as a result of our faith. Thank you very much. Uh, viewers, we still uh, welcome you to this uh, service and we uh, want to share in your thoughts at some point. Uh, I hope we can be able to sample a few of those thoughts uh, and see how uh, you know uh, we can dialogue with you in, in this regard. And uh, let me just get to uh, my next uh, question. Let me just get to my next question. Now, Melanie, is there Sabbath in heaven? Oh yes. Uh, uh, let me let me let me, I know this this is interesting. Excited. Is there is there a Sabbath observance in heaven? And if it uh, if your answer is yes, why is there so so much antagonism about Sabbath keeping right from the early church to where we are currently? Uh, what what is the issue about Sabbath keeping as a way of attaining God's rest. Hey, um, thank you so much. I, I was so excited. 
I still am excited when you asked me if there will be a Sabbath in heaven. And I was just looking at the book in Isaiah that says from Sabbath, from one moon to another and from Sabbath to Sabbath, the saints will be worshipping uh, by the throne of God. Um, now, the throne of God, every Sabbath will be, will be coming to, to uh, commemorate. Now, the work of redemption is, a, the story of redemption rather, is a mystery that we will, even after going to heaven, we will still be unraveling bits of it. We cannot finish that whole story right now. And every Sabbath, it will be a time of coming and looking at Jesus' hands again. For we had said the Sabbath is a double blessing, a creation and redemption. Looking at his hand, he still have that scars, the scar on his, on his hand. And it will remind us uh, in a way that will give us so much awe and love for him. And we'll be singing holy, holy, holy. Now, the Sabbath here is a foretaste of heaven. Every Sabbath we come together to worship and by faith look at his pierced hand and say, Holy, Holy, Holy. So this Sabbath, every seventh day, is a, uh, how do you call it? Um, the first course of a meal is a what? Dessert is the last one. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> the starter, but dessert is a sweet one. Let's have dessert as a starter now. <laughs> so the seventh day Sabbath is a is a dessert as we start our meal as we get to have the full course in heaven. Amen. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Denning. Your perspective, uh, whether we'll have Sabbath in heaven, and why uh, is there? Why would there, if it will be in heaven, why would there be controversy about Sabbath keeping uh, in our current? Uh, religious affairs. Uh, thank you, Elder. So, uh, uh, the institution of, of Sabbath uh, is a perpetual institution. Right from when God instituted it, after creation, it was meant to continue and continue to, for all eternity. It is a way in which we are able to have communion with God. And the only way uh, in which that is going to happen is if we draw closer to God and keep his statutes and principles, which we, which we are supposed to have and keep in our hearts uh, perpetually. So in like manner, uh, that isn't going to stop here or not. Even the coming of the new Jerusalem, we are going to have communion with God. Even on the way, on the way to, to, to our journey in heaven, it's going to be a continuous, uh, a continuous uh, time for us to express ourselves and grace in God. Uh, in order to uplift his name and thank him for his for his for his mercies, so uh, for the, the the gift of Sabbath is going to be is going to be there out through eternity, and it's a way for us to express ourselves and commune together and have eternal rest. Amen, amen. Doreen, if if Sabbath uh, is is a perpetual institution, why would people struggle to change it? Uh, why is there so much controversy about it uh, currently? Okay. As, as, as a way of, uh, you know, attaining God's final rest. Um, that's, a, that's a heavy question. <laughs> but I, I believe there's a, a lot of controversy in Sabbath keeping. Um, also, as a fulfillment of prophecy. These are things that have been written that people will strive to change times and seasons and we've seen that happening. So um, I think Sabbath observance is actually the highest or the ultimate um, fulfillment of our faith in Christ. It shows that we um, really believe in God because keeping the Sabbath will enable us to get the seal of God. So. Uh, I'm not sure if I've answered your question, Elder, <laughs> but I believe that the controversy that exists there now is because of the different perspectives that have been given over time. But it is our work as Seventh-day Adventist Christians to show the light to the world and to enable them to see what it truly means to keep the Sabbath as God would want us to. Amen. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Doreen, for that. I, I, I want to get to Melanie. I want to get to Melanie. Uh, we, we, we struggle, even we Seventh-day Adventists, Christians, uh, appear to be struggling to keep the Sabbath as a way of rest. Uh, including me who is speaking, sometimes I struggle. So, so why, how can, we, how can we hold one another uh, in this and, and how can we find fulfillment 
uh, in the Sabbath, true fulfillment in the Sabbath as a commemoration of God's creation and redemption. Thank you. Um, you know, the book of Hebrews was written to Hebrews. Hebrews were Sabbath keepers. So when uh, Paul goes on to talk about there remains a rest, we get the idea that he was not talking literally. He was not belaboring the point of the seventh day Sabbath, the literal seventh day Sabbath as we know it. It means that they were missing the point of true rest. Yes, they were keeping the day, the Sabbath day, but they were not finding that rest. And that I think in our present time is um, the letter of the Sabbath versus the spirit of the Sabbath. That is where the contention is. We are more focused on the day and the do's and the don'ts that we miss out on the Lord of the Sabbath. He says, this is my, come to my rest. And what Jesus did, he did on the cross, and uh, there's a, an allusion to that in Hebrews 10. If we we'll just read verse 14. Um, Hebrews 10, 14. Um, that invites, invites us to what the true Sabbath, the ultimate rest is. 10.14 says, For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. The Sabbath, as we say, is a, is a remembrance of God's redemptive power. That by his one offering he has perfected all of us. And this is the essence of the Sabbath as we speak. And uh, what he did is after his uh, ascension to heaven he was enthroned he sat jesus sat at the right side of the hand of the father and he sat after fulfilling his work of redemption now we need to understand that every sabbath day is a time to draw our minds back to the work that jesus did on calvary and to cease from our own efforts because we are called to cease from all works on the sabbath not only physically but also by grace say, okay, Lord, I surrender to you. You have done the work of salvation. Now the Sabbath day is just to come and enjoy, enjoy that rest. So why there is a, a bit of a struggle, even for us uh, Sabbath keepers, is because we have not really identified the true purpose, and that is the redemptive power of Christ. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for that response. I'll come back to my panelists in a short while. Let me just sample two or so comments uh, that have come through uh, in our online service. How do you convince, how do you convince, uh, this is Carissa Massey, Massey so, so be prepared, there are questions coming uh, from our online audience. How do you convince somebody who doesn't see the significance of the Sabbath, somebody who is, who is perhaps keeping another day, that uh, Sabbath is Saturday? And, and the significance of, of Sabbath as a foretaste of the final rest. I hope you get the question, Doreen. That will be directed at you. The other, can you cook on Sabbath? If yes, why do we make our microwave work? <laughs> uh, that will go to Malene, Malene, Mal Melanie, rather. The rest are, are just comments, and we want to thank you for your participation. Uh, those that are unable to find a church where they are and uh, have joined us in our online service, we thank you uh, from Arusha, Tanzania, from Dar es Salaam. I have a friend who wants to fellowship, kindly address the location. We are on 5th Ngong Avenue, uh, physically, 5th Ngong Avenue, uh, Nairobi, uh, Kenya. Uh, happy Sabbath. Uh, this is Ute Jen, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. May the blessings of the Lord be upon every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Watching from Istanbul. The power of the, uh, our media, we thank you, uh, Uche, uh, from, from Istanbul. Uh, just one more that I want to sample and then we'll be on our way to try to attempt the two questions. Uh, where is new life uh, located I've just landed in Kenya Fiona we again as I've mentioned located on 5th Ngong Avenue uh, uh, in uh, in Nairobi and and uh, if you google new life church you'll uh, probably find uh, your way on google maps there uh, Martha Musheru uh, kindly share the location of a pastor in Arusha we will uh, 
perhaps if you share your your coordinates or number, we'll be able to assist in that regard. But let, let me let me deal with the the two questions. Let me deal with the two questions, and I'd like to ask uh, Doreen to handle the first one, and then Melanie to handle the second one. Um, I think I've also come across people who've asked me uh, why why. Why are you so convinced that Saturday is a Sabbath day? And um, my response was, and it still is, that we should go back to the Bible. Sola Scriptura. You should go back to the Bible. Do not depend on what mortal man will tell you. Um, focus on what God says in his word and pray that the Lord may lead you to where you should be. That was my answer and that is still my answer. That if you are sincere in your work with God and you pray that he guides you, he will lead you to where he wants you to be. So if you follow the, the words of the Lord in the Bible, you will see that Sabbath observance started in the time of creation and it was never changed until if you follow down a long history is when you'll see it was man who changed the Sabbath day. So that is my answer and that was my answer. Even then. Melanie, I know this is a difficult one, what to do and what not to do on the Sabbath day, but uh, the question has come, and, and let's see whether we can get a scriptural support for what to do or what not to do. I, I believe once you get to be diligent enough, God leads you in terms of really what you can do and what you can't do. But please try to help us in this. Sure. Um, uh, just to give a scriptural text first of all to the first question, in the book of Luke chapter 24, this is the chronology of how Jesus died, was buried, and, and we uh, got re resurrected. Now we all agree that he resurrected on the Sunday morning, and the Bible says on the first day of the week he arose. Now that makes it clear that Sunday is the first day of the week. It therefore uh, just falls that Saturday is the Sabbath day because on Friday it's called the preparation day and the Sabbath drew near. So that uh, I think that is the beginning of the study of whether Saturday is a seventh day or, or not. But I think that that for me has always worked. Um, to where to, what to do and what not to do. Now in the book of Exodus, you know, why cooking is such an issue is because even Jesus himself said, "Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God." We find that cooking and what we eat becomes very spiritual on the seventh day or the Sabbath, because even in Exodus 16:23 they were told, "Bake that which will bake and boil that which will boil on the preparation day." But the essence of all this is not whether the microwave will work or what and what will work. Is that? Yet again to the spiritual aspect of the bread. Well, when you're cooking, there's so much um, mind to it. You take so much time in that which you're doing that you fail to eat the bread of life that is especially really, really nice on the Sabbath day. So this is just a way of telling us as much as is possible, just do that the little that you must and give yourself time to enjoy the bread of life so we won't say don't cook don't microwave don't do that don't do that we'll be missing the the spirit of the sabbath so let the holy spirit lead you and prepare yourself in advance do the least that you can to make yourself comfortable as you also eat from the word of god right uh denning the sabbath is 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 a is, is a commemoration of of creation and redemption and, and we find God, you know, asking of, of, of Adam and Eve, asking of Abraham to rest because he himself rested. Do you have a comment on the do's and the don'ts or whether it is the Sabbath or any other day? Uh, thank you, Elder. So uh, the, my response would be uh, on that particular day of the Sabbath, uh, it behooves us to have total communion with God and uh, throw away everything that hinders us. We saw uh, the, kind of, uh, the kind of influences that bedevil the, the, the Israelites. It, it, it comes so, sort of a, a slick compromise that you give one day following the other and such, such kind of things, it, it eventually has a domino-like effect. And that eventually leads to big compromises. Eventually you find yourself compromising even in your faith. In like manner, that's why uh, God uh, intends for us to have a, a, a mutual connection with Him. So if we if we adhere to the tenets that the that the principles of the Word has, 
we'll be able to have that true connection with him. The one that, that true all-time religion that we are told about, we'll be able to attain that. Then that comes from, from uh, having true communion with God uh, with respect to the Sabbath. Yes. So, 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 Doreen, are there careers that, and, and I see that on our chat, are there careers that are, are oriented to, you know, whether you exercise uh, or, or, or work on the Sabbath, it's okay. And there are others that, you know, uh, you guys are, are, are lawyers. Uh, and so if uh, you have a client that uh, is in trouble on a Sabbath day and uh, a court says, yes, we are open for business today, uh, and there's a client that is really in trouble. Uh, I see that of uh, a nurse uh, in our chat, a nurse says, I'm oftentimes called upon to save lives on the Sabbath day. I'm a Sabbath keeper, but I've called upon to save lives. Is that okay? And, 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 and so, so that's to you. And then to Denning, uh, so which careers should we then advise our kids to? Are there careers that, you know, should we advise our kids to follow? And, and we are still on, on the issue of rest. I, I will come back to this uh, after this round of questions. Are there, are there you know, careers that we can advise, yes, this is okay, because even if you, even if you break the Sabbath, you're not breaking so, so much, it's still okay. Let's start with you, Doreen. Okay. Um, the question was whether, please rephrase the question. Okay. Uh, are there, are there, your, 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 your client or your patient is, is, is in trouble on a Sabbath day. And the hospital says you can come, or the court says you can come, I'll, I'll give you a hearing. Is that okay? Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, I think I'd say um, there are certain circumstances where it's a life or death situation, such as if I know someone is sick, I wouldn't say I can't take you to hospital because it's Sabbath. And this person is really sick and they need to go to hospital. I would take them to hospital in that situation. Or if it's an emergency that is life and death, then in that situation, I would act and save that person's life. Because um, I remember even in the Bible, the Lord said, Jesus said that, would you leave your donkey in the well uh, just because it's Sabbath? No. Because I remember that story, I'm trying to get it just from the top of my mind, uh, when the disciples were picking wheat and the Jews were like, why are your disciples picking wheat? Yeah, yeah, they're working on the Sabbath. And the Lord said that the Sabbath, man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. So we'd have to exercise discernment. Uh, Denning, your quick comment, and then we will. I see our time is fast spent, so we, we need to bring this to a close. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, the way Doreen has put it, uh, sort, sort of like uh, puts it into perspective. Uh, the premise of uh, the premise of the situation will have a likelihood uh, will have a huge impact on your decision that you are going to make. For example, if uh, if I'm called to OR or casualty and told that there's a patient who has a polytrauma patient who needs to be sutured, and, there's, uh, and then there, there's no one around, uh, in that situation I might step in. If there's someone to cover well and good, I'll ask one of my colleagues to go in and cover for me. But uh, in, in, in like manner when Jesus was, uh, Jesus was around and then they told him, then, then Jesus asked them, which one of you with an ass which has fallen into a trench will not go and pick it out? So it calls for us to uh, exercise our own discretion and, and with, with, with strong correlation to the, to the word of God. And in terms of career choices, uh, I don't think I would have a particular preference to a part particular career because it, I'd, I'd say it all boils down to your own acumen, with your own discipline. Huh? If, you are able to, if you are able to find a way not to compromise, that should be the path for you to take. We are actually not supposed to compromise at all, whichever the situation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Denning, and thank you very much, our viewers, for your comments. Uh, we need to bring this to a close. Uh, Samuel Manasseh from Canada, uh, Job Makori, uh, Jubal, uh, Maureen Masara, thank you very much for those comments. I believe we have dealt uh, with them. Uh, now, uh, we need to close. 
And I just want uh, Denning to talk of, let's go back to the word, uh, sorry, Melanie, the word remain. The word remain, as you explained earlier on, meant that there's something that we still need to look forward to. When Paul, Paul says, there remains, what is this thing we are looking forward to and how do we prepare for it? Quickly, please. Um, this, the Lord is calling us. That we can take the opportunity that the Israelites failed to do in the wilderness to enter into the ultimate rest. And that which means what we should do is to be diligent to enter into this into this rest as we've said before is a total surrender to god not any day but today when you hear his voice may you not procrastinate make a decision for christ for christ is the giver of rest he says come unto me it's a call to you it's a call to us it's time to make that decision that you come into the rest of christ and the sabbath the seventh day is a commemoration of this rest it will be lovely to fellowship one with another as we journey into this uh, the rest the ultimate rest Amen. uh denning uh, on the issue of remains uh what is the work of christ in your view uh, and how should we prepare for that uh, in terms of that which was re the rest that remained to be fulfilled? Exactly. Uh, now, uh, we all know that Christ uh, is uh, currently atoning for us and for our sins. So, uh, we are not going to be, uh, the, the second coming of Christ won't come unless we have, uh, we have uh, the word of God uh, distributed fairly across the world and we have uh, that ecumen we have that that uh, that connection with Christ and all the all the all, all around the globe uh, the word of Christ has has gotten to the very far reaches of the crevices of the earth so it is uh, the, it is incumbent upon us to take it upon us to exercise uh, exercise the the, the 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 ministry that Christ had left for us uh, and that will be carried out by grace by faith and by love those factors will enable us to, to, to they will give us the impetus to go and spread the word of Christ across the world. In like manner, we'll be supporting his ministry even as he atones for us in heaven. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Denning. Uh, Melen, again, the work of Christ in heaven uh, in terms of the final rest that we should be looking forward to, which Paul says there's something much better that is still remaining to be accomplished. We know that now Christ is our high priest. He's interceding for us. He makes our prayers beautiful in the presence of God. So we look forward to having that face-to-face -face communion with God where now we'll be able to talk to him directly as a friend and as our father. Thank you very much. Let me just get your parting shots so that we close this. Uh, starting from Denning. Thank you. And Elder. then I'll come to you, Doreen, and then you'll close. Thank you, Elder. So mine would be um, for us to, in order to have a, 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 personal a personal communion with God, in order to attain rest, we must have that deliberate effort. It must be stirred in us by us accepting Christ into our lives. That is when we are able to have that actual and uh, actual divine rest. So I'd, I'd implore all of us to make that deliberate effort to draw Christ into our hearts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doreen. Your parting shot? Uh, my parting shot would be from the title, Jesus is the giver of rest. So we should remember that it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. So let us lean on him to lead us to his heavenly rest. Melanie? And, and heaven, uh, the Sabbath is a foretaste of heaven and we'll be resting from our sins. So when we rest from our sins, that means that Jesus has forgiven us and even right now he's calling you, repent. Take, give him all that turmoil in your heart and the sin that easily ensnares you and he will give you the rest of a peace of mind and even fellowship one with another. Uh, thank you very much, uh, panelists, for such a, uh, an enthralling uh, discussion. We want, to, we want to thank God for each and every one of you and for our audience. Christ is the giver of rest and without Christ there cannot be rest. Whether the Davinic rest that was uh, uh, promised to David, whether the Abrahamic rest that was promised to Abraham and was to be accomplished by the Israelites, uh, putting away idolatry and conquering Canaan, whether the uh, Adamic rest that was promised for a rest in the Garden of Eden, you cannot have that rest unless you have Christ. That's the reason when Adam and Eve 
uh, left uh, were driven out of the Garden of Eden, they failed to get that rest because they were, they, their focus ceased uh, to be on Christ. We want to thank you very much. Once again, we look forward to uh, this final rest that, that, that is awaiting. Uh, we, we hope that uh, soon and very soon uh, we'll get to that rest. But meanwhile, we've got to be diligent, exercise our faith, and come to him that is the giver of rest. Thank you very much for sharing your time and your Sabbath with us. We thank you very much uh, from New Life, Fifth Ngong Avenue. God bless you.